James Bloodworth had a brief fling while traveling in the U.S. in 2019, but it was after he returned home to the U.K. that the abuse and the death threats began. It was a terrifying attempt to destroy first him, then his new partner, all from 5,000 miles away. This woman waged a campaign of, of online terror. It would target my friends, it would target female friends of mine, it would target my girlfriend. I felt terrorized by it. In 2019, in the summer, so the end of June, I traveled to Las Vegas. Um, the purpose was it was like a holiday and a trip to see friends. While I was in Vegas, I hooked up with someone, a young woman. We met in a, in a nightclub and then we, we, we hung out a few times. And uh, then we kind of parted ways. I was in Vegas. Uh, I was, it was obviously never going to go anywhere else. I did start to get a feeling that something was a bit off with her. So for example, she started to ask if she could move into my condo with me. We'd only known each other for three days. And she started to then get abusive because I wouldn't let her move in. Ultimately, I had to block her number. Then she basically stalked me. This woman kind of hounded me over text message, over, uh, you know, over WhatsApp, over Instagram, over, over Facebook, over uh, Twitter, over, over Gmail. And she even contacted my employers, sending emails out saying that I was a drug addict, making all kinds of bizarre, accusations. I'd sometimes receive dozens of emails um, a day, sometimes, you know, a lot more than that. They were just kind of deranged kind of rants. You know, sometimes I feel like it could, I felt, I have felt like it could just go on forever. I genuinely felt terrorized by it. Earlier, we talked to James about his terrifying ordeal. Fascinating interview. Here's what he had to say. James, thank you so much for joining us uh, despite these awful circumstances. How did it feel whenever you got a message from your stalker? What went through your mind and what would you do? Uh, I would say my, my immediate response is my kind of heart sunk, you know, my, or my stomach sunk, is that kind of sinking feeling uh, internally. There were periods where, so this went on for two years, but there were periods where it did seem to stop for, for a certain period of time. Um, and that almost made it worse when it started up again because you would get that sinking feeling. And also because of the, the, the sheer length of time in between, it felt as if the, you know this will never end. This mm. is always gonna be something that I'm gonna have in my life. Wow. You know, James, I would imagine that this hasn't just affected you. It has to have had some sort of an impact on your friends and family, right? Yeah, I mean, one of the, one of the most unpleasant things about this, this stalking uh, case has been that the stalker has not just targeted me, she has also targeted friends of mine, uh, ex-girlfriends of mine, uh, employers of mine, oh my and also my, my present uh, girlfriend. So that's been, that's unpleasant for those people, of course. Um, but then it's also, you kind of get blowback from it each time that happens. So on the one hand, when I receive a bunch of abusive messages myself, it's, you know, I have a fairly thick skin. I work as a journalist. It's something that I can kind of, um, it, you know, I, I'm used to that in some respects. But when you have members of, um, you know, friends of yours or, 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 or loved ones contacting you in a highly kind of agitated situation, they're stressed because they're getting these messages, then that is almost worse. Um, that yeah. almost feels worse because you feel responsible for the pain it's causing them as well. Wow. I want to ask this question because I think a lot of our viewers are asking it themselves. As a man, do you think your case was taken less seriously than if you had been a woman with a male stalker? Um, I mean, I can't comment on how, how seriously cases of, of women being stalked are because, I mean, I have heard quite a lot of horror stories um, of women who haven't got, who the police haven't dealt with their cases effectively. But I mean, there, I think there is a different reaction on some level. So, I mean, anecdotally, when I've, when I've talked to certain people about it, they, they tend to see the issue of a woman stalking a man as something that can be kind of humorous that is not you know oh, that's not something serious but i mean yeah i mean i think that is i think that plays into the kind of narrative of, of played into the narrative of my stalking case because some police departments didn't take it seriously. some did some police officers did take it seriously but some definitely did not wow yeah, james um you know this is going to lead into this next question which i know a lot of people are asking dbl is broadcast across the country um so are you worried what will happen if your stalker sees you on tv telling us about your story um i mean the thoughts obviously crossed my mind but um i i I thought, thought about this more a few months ago when I decided to write my first article on this on this subject. So, I mean, I, I write for a living, that's my job. Um, but I kind of thought about writing about the stalking case because it had been 
it had been at the forefront of my mind for, you know, for, for two years. And so I wrote about it. I was worried that, that there might be blowback from this. Um, but I also thought, you know, I'm not going to be kind of silenced by this person. Yeah. I'm not going to be kind of, I'm not going to like hide away. I haven't done anything wrong. And I think it might also, like I thought it might also help other people because one of the things that I found helpful when, you know, when, when it was, when the stalking was very bad, um, was to read the accounts of other people, the coping mechanisms they used, the way they kind of uh, got through it, the way they, they protected their, their friends and family, etc. So I thought I might be able to, it was cathartic. I thought it might help other people. And I also thought, as I think about this interview now, that, you know, why should I hide away? Why, why should I feel like that um, I have to be kind of afraid of this person? I'm, I'm not afraid uh, anymore. And um, I think stories like this can help other people. Bravo, man. 100 percent. Right? Are they going to be able to help other people? James, we thank you so much for having the courage to come on here and share your story. Uh, we really appreciate you and hopefully we can get an update from you real soon that somehow. Thank um, you for having me. Yeah, things are are going to end up OK. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dean. Thank you.